lead. Herschel Walker, the big man in that first half with the 84-yard touchdown run. Hank, we're just uh, visiting and thinking about the second half. Any chance Cunningham would play? No, I don't think so. I talked to him on the field before the game, and the great competitor, competitor that he is, it was very obvious talking to him that he didn't. He'd love to play, but I don't think he physically thinks he can play. The sore is very, the thumb is very sore and tender. There's no way he can take a snap, and he doesn't like to be back in a, sh a shotgun anyhow. So I really don't think he's going to play. I think it'd be foolish to let him play with his thumb the way it is. Very similar injury that Tommy Kramer, the Vikings, sustained, and he had to be out for two weeks. Right. Coming back last week in a game we had in Green Bay. So McFadden, who kicked two field goals in the first half, starts the second half of play. LaVette will bring it out for the Cowboys. Had a big hole up the middle, and he makes it out to the 31-yard line. It's a good thing that somebody slowed him down a little bit because there was a big alley there, and he was just getting ready to get into it. It had been a long play. So Steve Pelour, who in that uh, first half suffered the interception by Terry Hogue a couple of times under throwing some guys, is 4 of 12 for 46 yards at the halfway point. You know, I'm surprised, and I look for more play-action passes, especially on first and 10 from the Cowboys. They were successful a couple of times in, in the first half, and then they got away from it. Let's see if they go back to it in the second half. Tony Hill split to the near side. Sherrard to the top of the screen as Pelour on first down to throw. A little bit of difficulty, scrambling out of there, being chased. Gets rid of it to Herschel Walker, and for all that, they gained about a yard. Andre Waters over. Waters is just all over the football. Yeah, he really, he really is a great player. And you know what happened on the play? I think Pelour anticipated getting man-for-man -man coverage. And a lot of times on first and ten, the Eagles play zone. That time they were in a zone. They had everybody faded. There was no place to throw the football. Waters, one of the new faces. And uh, Buddy Ryan said when he came into camp in great shape and the way he was hitting people, I knew he was a player. And he's certainly added to that uh, credibility as the year was worn on. Second down now, nine yards to go for Dallas. Now they're in a 46. Or set. Tony, oh, what a nifty move. Looked like absolutely no place to go, and he gets yardage. Doug Cosby threw the lead block, and Dorsett brings it out a yard short, maybe two yards short, to the 39. A draw play. The linemen set up, and then they they uh, assume their responsibility. Paz Derrick does a good job of blocking Reggie White. They run inside, and Cobb is blocked to the outside, number 50, and as a result, why, there was a big running alley there for him to take advantage of it, and he did. And uh, now it's about third and two. That's what it is. You know, you talk about good feet, Dorsett, the way he can pivot, cut, and move through an area that doesn't seem large enough to get there. There's a little shovel pass forward to Walker, first down, out to the 50-yard line, and then some. He's to the Eagle end of the field. Terry Hogue, his former teammate at Georgia, eventually over to make the stop. That play was successful because the defensive end, defensive end came right up the field, and that's the way you like to run the play. Look at the big cavity. Brown is way up the field. They don't have to block him. They run right inside of him. Look at the running alley, and he's finally knocked down by Terry Hogue, number 34. And Tuine made a nice block out in front uh, on the play, number 71. It goes as a 14-yard pass completion. Sets it up now just short of the 48-yard line of Philadelphia. That's an effective play to use with Watkins. Oh, it was a perfect call because the end really came up the field just like you want him to on the play. Newsom replaces Walker in the backfield. He's there with Dorsett. This is Dorsett with the ball, and all of a sudden, Seth Joyner's there. Here's another guy, Joyner. Who'd ever heard of him? He played at Texas El Paso. They've had such long seasons, going winless in a couple of occasions, and uh, he's able to make the stop. They say he's just an excellent athlete, potential that uh, is going to just get better and better, and he has started now the last five games in place of their number two draft pick, Alonzo Johnson. Well, he's one of the guys that makes it so tough to, to do any business, business on because uh, what happens is that Landry said, you know, talking about scoring against Philadelphia, it's difficult to score a lot of points against Philadelphia. Dallas with that lead at half, and they've got it right now, 7-6, and that ball broken up beautifully. Fouls at the last instant on a pass intended for Sherrard, and it'll bring up third down and 12. That time, they're in a zone again that time, anticipating man-for-man -man coverage. And watch Fowles. He's got great position on him, watching him all the way. Comes back for the ball. The ball is thrown on the inside. He gets great anticipation, knocks it down, and almost came up with the interception. You know, Fowles uh, is their fifth defensive back normally, and he's starting now, obviously, 
but he's a lot better football player than people think he is, and people challenge him because they think Roynell Young is so good on the other side, not that he's a bad player, it's just that Roynell has is, uh, is got such a great reputation. He had an interception last week in that game against St. Louis. Added that one down, third down, 12. Pelour, and there again it's fouled, and he almost got it again. Tony Hill, the intended receiver that time. You know, the thing I like about fouls, I watched him practice. Nobody works any harder consistently in practice when we watch him practice than fouls. He's all over the place, 100% all the time. And here again, great anticipation. He really had a chance to, and maybe should have made the interception, except I think Hill got a piece of the ball and knocked it out of there. But he's done a great job, I think, on the right corner, especially so far in this game. You know, Hank, what's interesting, Buddy Ryan got on his case. He said he was playing 30 yards off the line of scrimmage last week, but he's not today. He's played him tight on those two particular occasions. Saxon punts it very poorly. The ball is going to hit in the vicinity of the 23-yard line. So Saxon's been struggling today. That's a 27-yard punt. The Eagles are going to come away with good field position as they trail by one. They need to have San Francisco lose, and right now New England has the lead in the third quarter there, 17-16. You know, a, lot, a funny thing about uh, San Francisco going out east to play in bad weather, they talk about uh, how tough it is to throw the ball. You know, there's not a better bad weather quarterback in the league than Joe Montana. And I think the fact that he played so well right here in Dallas in the Cotton Bowl in 77 in that very cold day was a great illustration of how well he throws. Eventually won the national championship that time for Dan Devine pulling that one out. By the way, Quick is not in the ball game right now. He sustained that bruised knee in the first half, so he's not starting the second half. They make it to the 25-yard line. As we said at the start of our broadcast today, the Giants, Chicago, and Washington are in. The Rams could move into the division championship if they win today, which leaves San Francisco, Minnesota, Dallas, and Atlanta vying for that wild card position. San Francisco has to lose twice, and Dallas win twice. Minnesota lose once for the Cowboys to make it. You follow all of that? <laughs> you got that down, Coach? You need a computer and a slide rule to figure that out. This time, very little operating room as Keith Byers trying to go off the right hand side. It's going to bring up a third down and five. Third and five now for Philadelphia. Giants. Boy, they're moving, aren't they? They are hot. And Green Bay leading Tampa Bay. Cleveland hangs on there. They'll win the AFC Central. So the Colts, uh, their one game winning streak may come to a grinding halt. I wonder when they came down from cloud nine after that win <laughs> last week. Probably today. That's right. So they kicked the ball off. Third down and five now. I understand Quick will not return to the ball game. You see Garrity now in motion. Kavanaugh, there's Randy White. Five sacks by the Dallas Cowboys, and Randy White storming through for another one. What a strong game 54 is playing. Randy White, the left side of your screen, playing over the deep, the uh, offensive guard and tackle. Look at him, gets right through Hayden again, and gets the penetration and makes the sack on the quarterback. I know the Eagles don't want to be reminded of this, Hank, but that is the 99th sack. The record prior to this year was 70. The Eagles just add to that dubious distinction of having that record each week. Here's Telchik now to punt from inside the five-yard line. You got a six-man rush. They're not really coming after No, no, they're not. There's a very fine punt. Very high. Got excellent hang time on it. And Banks pays for it. What a hit. It's put on by David Little, number 89. That's a 45-yard punt. And Banks was a sitting duck on that one. Another flag in the play, though, Gary. That doesn't surprise you, does no, it? No, it doesn't. Yeah. You know, every time they make a kick, you invert. Uh, obviously, always go right back to the kicking area to see if there's a yellow flag. And in this particular case, there is again. It's a reflex action. It really is. Boy, Banks really paid for that one because David Little, number 89, was there almost as soon as the football arrived. You know, it's amazing how few deep receivers signal for the fair catch and take advantage of that opportunity they have to make a, a catch easy when somebody's right in front, but they don't do it. Might extend your career a little bit, huh? Well, you know what happens. I think they're afraid sometimes to raise the hand and then bring it back down in time to this make the catch. Foul. I think that's one of the problems. Number 23, the defense. 
First down. Ooh, that is a major break for Philadelphia. That is Johnny Holloway, the defensive back with a personal foul, which will give the Eagles a first down. I don't know where that happened, Hank. No, I didn't see it. I wish I could tell you, but I didn't see it. There he is. He's going to get another penalty if he didn't get that shirt tail in. Tom doesn't like that. The league doesn't like it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Don't. You better get some scissors or tuck it in. <laughs> One of the two. Johnny, who played at Kansas, passed up his senior year to be drafted. He's a Houston native. There's your penalties. And Dallas, as we mentioned, leading the NFC in penalty yardage, and that was a costly one there. I can't understand why either one of the two teams have not thrown play action passes more on first and ten to slow down that rush. Let's we'll see what they do here. Nope, it's going to go off to Tony. Tony, you go nowhere. I'll tell you one thing, though, Hank, he had the ball in the right arm. <laughs> I've been working with you long enough, I look for those things. Yeah, now. that's right. He, he had it in the, in, the, in the left arm away from pressure, but. That defense of the, and that's there again. You know, it's very tough to run east and west against the Cowboys because they respond and read so well. If you can slow them down with a play action occasionally on first and ten, at least slow down the read and maybe throw on the outside of the linebackers or between the linebackers and the defensive backs, you got a chance. They haven't done it. I can't understand why. Look at this. Mike Swanson, our statistician, indicating Philadelphia now has averaged 1.9 on first downs. That last effort didn't help them much. Virtually no gain, maybe a half yard. Second down coming up. that play action they give it off instead though to Tony and Tony running top brings it out to the 40. A little shoving and pushing inside they're going to be three maybe four yards short of the first down. Tony played here in the Texas Stadium when uh, he played for Texas A&M against SMU. Getting up kind of slowly. That time Nick Hayden really got a he, I, he's got to be very frustrated look at him hobbling off the field. Watch, watch Hayden, the left guard, number 62. See, he's trying to do, he's trying to turn uh, number 54, Randy White. And uh, Randy is so quick and controls the top of his body with it, uses his hand so well that it's he's very, very hard to get to. Hayden, of course, the guy they picked up on waivers from the Raiders. They're going to look Tony over as Michael Haddix has replaced him at fullback. Third down, four. Here they come with Albert on the blitz. A pass to Ron Johnson, who's playing in place of the injured quick, and that's a first down. Johnson with his ninth catch of the year, an 11-yard pickup. He's a former standout in the Canadian Football League. Got 140 passes up there. Here you see him drive the defensive back backwards. Ron Fellows comes back for the ball, and the ball is thrown that time right at the numbers, so he has a chance to get some help from the body along with the hands, and he makes the catch for the first down. Good pass protection on the play. Johnson went on the injured reserve list. He suffered a concussion in a game against San Diego. It's been reactivated a couple of weeks ago. Is it, this would be a good time here for a play action. Let's see if they do that. No, they're going to run right again. Here they go. Byers. Byers, big collision. Stays on his feet, but he's still not going anywhere. Half of the Cowboy team on top of him. No gain on the play. Loss of one. Let's go to New York now for an update. Here's Brent Musburger. Gary, I know the Cowboy fans are keeping a close eye on what happens to the 49ers. The Patriots have gone ahead on this touchdown first. They convert the extra point. Remember earlier, the Niners missed one, 17-16. Let's go back to Gary and Hank. Well, I tell you, that one, of course, being followed very closely in Cowboy land. Could go down to that last week where the Cowboys have to beat the Bears here. That'd be tough, wouldn't it? They got a good... Mm. Well, I get down 10, and that's intended to Spagnola. That's the first time they've looked at their tight end in this game. Well, he was a hot receiver that time because of the blitz and, uh, and the penetration was so severe that he didn't really have a chance to get rid of the ball like he wanted to. Lockhart made good penetration. Anytime the middle linebacker blitzes like he did, you go to the tight end automatically, but he threw the ball poorly again, and uh, now it's another long yardage situation. Third and 11, Hank. Yep. Third down 11 of the 50-yard line. It's interesting to me, you come into this game, the Cowboys in particular, they were going to throw Cosby to him a lot, get him in the game. They haven't done that. The Eagles haven't gotten their tight end involved either. Well, they didn't They didn't expect to get the tight end in the game. The Eagles didn't, but the Cowboys did because of the man-for-man -man coverage with the linebacker. They're moving the pocket. Look at the blitz again. Yep, that was Penn on the blitz, and that ball is almost picked up. That's Holloway, who got the personal foul earlier, who made the fine defensive effort. 
Oh, well, it's a fourth down. And talking about the tight end, that time they tried to get the ball to Spagnola. They move the pocket, go all the way to the right side, but look at the good position, the very good position by Holloway, number 23. And he almost makes the interception. Holloway signed at Northwestern. Dennis Green was the coach there. Then he had some academic difficulties, transferred to Butler County Junior College, then played at Kansas, was a wide receiver in college, now playing a defensive back spot. Telchik to punt. Boy, Telchik's a great-looking uh, athlete, isn't he? You see him in practice, all the things he does, the way he throws the ball and everything. He's a terrific athlete. Boy, he got that one high. Uh -huh. Mike stumbled it, but he got on it at the 18-yard line. I remember Fred Akers telling me that he'd never had a punter that could place the ball like Telchik. That was a 32-yarder. At the 18, Dallas will have it. Eighth week of the NFL season, and at Texas Stadium, we still have the playoff hopes on the line for the Dallas Cowboys, who lead it 7-6. Seven minutes, one second to go in the third quarter. I'm Gary Bender, along with Hank Scram, and that updates you on the scoring. McFadden with two field goals, and Herschel Walker with the longest run from scrimmage in the NFL this year, an 84-yard touchdown scamper. Here he goes again. This time they catch up with him. Boy, he bursts through there, doesn't he? To the 38, 39 yard line. Andre Waters caught up with him. And Herschel Walker was looking for another long 80 yard run. You talk about a clean hole. Look at a trap lock. A what it was is a negative play. Clark went with a pulling guard and he ran right behind a pulling guard, didn't block anybody. And Clark was still trying to figure out what happened on the play. Watch the right guard pull on the play. Look at, and uh, Clark, went with him for for that reason there was a big hole there and Walker went right through there in good shape and Terry Hogan waters made the tackle Walker now with 114 yards rushing his high for the year is 120 this time Dorsett trying to uh, get through the middle and he gets a yard maybe two to the 40 yard line so four carries 114 yards for Herschel Walker who had 120 yards against the Cardinals earlier this year Dorsett, on the other hand, has been shut down. But you can't hold both these guys down no, very long. No, you're going to stop them for a while, but all of a sudden one of them explodes and you got a big play. And that's what this team is all about, is a big play personality. Talking about the Cowboys. Dorsett, 11 carries for 46 yards. On the 40 now. Oops, movement. Ken Clark, number 71, coming through the middle. Bob Frederick wants to be absolutely sure what's happened. First start on the offense, left guard. It'll be second down after the five-yard penalty. Well, that'd be Tysoner, number 63, who is guilty of moving. This offensive line, Hank, has been much maligned this year. Basically, they've had their problems at offensive tackle. Miles Derrick and has given them some strength in their right hand side due to the injury to Jim Cooper. They like Crawford Kerr. He might be their future pro bowler at that spot. They like him very much, and they, they like Mark Tuane too on the on the left tackle position. Over well, defensive lineman now playing there. There's Blur trying to set up the screen. And Dorsett dropped it. They had that set up pretty well too. They got a block downfield. Had he made the catch, he'd have been able to cover some real estate on that one. Dorsett is not the back coming out of the backfield to catch the ball that Walker is. But he is still very capable in that area. He had 24 catches prior to today. You think about Herschel, over 600 yards rushing, over 600 yards receiving coming into the day. What a combination he gives them. Indianapolis is on the scoreboard. Ron Myers got them playing much better. From the 35 now, third down, 14 yards to go. They're in the 36 defense now with the three linemen. Now see what kind of a push they get on the on the, the center and the right guard and the left guard on this play. Here they come with the total blitz. Oh, a Giles top. unloaded on Pooler, and Tony Hill can't hang on. But that was Dwayne Giles, number 53, that, I mean, he took Pooler apart on this, and I'm surprised Steve got up as quickly as he did. He's hurting a little bit. Too. Yeah, they were all coming that time, and that was the right play. He tried to get up on top, but um, uh, the uh, defensive back, Roynell Young, played it beautifully, and, of course, he's he's very difficult to beat on that kind of a pattern. So Giles I hurried that one up. Fourth down. Saxon is struggling. He's averaging only 32 yards. You know, if you're going to beat a 
a Ronell Young, you got to make some kind of a double move. You're just not going to run by him like you tried to do in the last play. Whoa, it's rush stuck. and it's blocked. The kick is blocked by Jody Schultz. It's loose. There is a penalty flag. The Cowboys are on top of the ball at the 11-yard line, but Jody Schultz, number 95, third-year man from East Carolina, came up the middle almost untouched. Offensive holding on the tackle, and the penalty will be refused. First down for the First Eagles. Down. Jody Schultz, number 95, from the end zone, right in the to the left part of your left middle. He gets right, yeah, right through the blockers and makes the penetration, takes the right angle and blocks the kick. Jody Schultz, number 95, there he gets. He gets right through both blockers and gets right out in front beautifully and blocks the kick. That a is, lot of times you take the wrong angle and the guy's still able to kick the ball underneath the hands. That time he got the hands at the perfect spot. That is the first block of Saxon this year. Schultz up the middle to do that. Second round draft pick in 83. He's come back from some major knee surgery. First down at the 11. See if they're going to run left. Here they come. Tony, who's back in there, bad ankle and all. Randy White is there. Boy, Randy White is something. Fellows came up, but it was Randy White so strong that just spun Tony around on this play. Randy White, they're coming outside. They're leaning this way, and look at White. Look at, they missed the block on him again. He takes a person a perfect angle gets the hook out on the right arm and throws him down to the turf what a great play again a great play again by number 54 consistently Randy White Lots on the play it'll bring up second down 12 7 6 Dallas now looks like we're gonna run right here they go to Tony again Tony to the 10 Tony to almost the eight yard line Lockhart over to make the stop. It's going to bring up a third down and still seven yards to go. You know, they went into the game with the anticipation of being able to run right at the, the Cowboy defense. They haven't done that efficiently at all. Now they're moving a little bit to the outside and doing a better job. Lockhart has been hurt. The guy known as the hitting machine. I talked to Eugene about that. He said, when I came in as a rookie, they were looking for some hitters. So I was very excited about that. I went out, got the label as a hitting machine, and three years later, he's a starting middle linebacker. And here they go. Big play now. Third down seven for Philadelphia. You might see a roll out here. Let's see if they do it. Well, they got the tight end on the right side. They got a lot of room on the left side. Let's see what they decide to do. Uh-oh, now they change the formation to the left side. Whoop. They go Jackson. back the other way. They're going to roll, but to roll That's to the Kenny right. That's Kenny Jackson. He is in for the touchdown. Boy, they executed that beautifully. Boy, they did. I tell you, they crossed everybody up because the wide side of the field was to the left where you have a lot of room, and he looked like he was going to go back to the left side. Then they went back right, roll right, and got it right in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown, right at the flag. Here it comes. Here he rolls to the right, and look at the great anticipation. Gets rid of the ball quickly, gets the ball right out to the outside, and he knows where he is, steps into the end zone for the touchdown. Everson Walls, number 24, trying to cover on the play. Fifth touchdown catch of the year for Kenny Jackson. We mentioned the last couple of games he'd only caught one ball, but that's a big one. McFadden, who's had two field goals, adds a point after. And for the second time of this game, the Eagles have the lead. Very impressive call on that particular play. 13-7, the Eagles. Jackson with that touchdown catch a moment ago. Look back in this game right now, Hank, and the Dallas kicking game has really disappeared. Saxon was averaging 32 yards before he had that last one blocked. You know, and you get the feeling that defense isn't playing badly, but you, you get the feeling that uh, the offense of the Cowboys kind of a grab bag thing. They just haven't established anything, nothing personality-wise at all. You don't know, you have any idea what they're going to do. Well, you take away that 84-yard run, and that's and that, been it. And that was just great individual uh, effort on, on uh, Herschel's part. Cowboys bring it out. That's Lovett again, and that's Giles who made the tackle. Boy, Giles and Schultz, two guys you don't hear a lot about, have uh, really contributed in this third quarter. Well, looking ahead, next Sunday on CBS Sports, it's an NFL doubleheader of the final week. It all starts with the NFL today, 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern. 
followed by either Washington at Philadelphia or New Orleans at Minnesota in game one. Then followed in the second game of the doubleheader where the Bears will come here to Texas Stadium to take on the Cowboys. And the way this game is going and the way that San Francisco-New England game is going, that's going to be a very big football game. You know, I, I just can't for the life of me figure out why Dallas hasn't used more play-action passes on first and ten. They started doing it, were very successful, now they got away from the haven't done it for a long, long time. The 26, Dorsett. Dorsett gets some operating room out to the 32. Terry Hogue made the stop. Well, this game has been a sellout, Hank, for two months. However, there were 17,172 no-shows, and that is a Texas Stadium record. And I, uh, it again shows you that uh, the fans like a winner. It's the only thing that really matters. Just make sure you do one thing, win the game. The only thing that really matters, just win the game. Where are the real Dallas Cowboys? Well, part of the real Dallas Cowboys standing on the sideline and Danny White. Second down now, four yards to go. Delore, he's in trouble. Reggie White carries him. The ball is fumbled. The Cowboys have recovered. They're booing Pelor, but I'm telling you, Hank, there just wasn't much going there. There's no way in the world. Uh, Reggie White got penetration again. He had no place to go, nothing to do. He fumbled the ball, but he got hit. You got to have time to throw the ball and be able to follow through and make the delivery. Watch it again. Okay, look at the penetration. They get a good push. And watch outside. Reggie White gets knocked down. He comes back from the backside, makes the tackle, and knocks the ball loose in a process. A great effort by Reggie White because he was on the ground and came up and made the play. You've got to feel sorry for Pelour. Things are not going well. And as you said so many times, Hank, you get too much of the credit, too much of that spot. Yeah, they start booing the quarterback, and he has, you know, it's ridiculous to boo him because he didn't uh, wasn't responsible for what happened. From the 27 now, Pelour wants a timeout. He wants a timeout, and he got it just before we had a delay of game. Timeout. Now, I want to correct something, Hank. We had some information that's not correct. That is not a Texas Stadium no-show record. The record is 21,580. That was a wild-card playoff game versus the Rams. So there were 17,172 no-shows today. So. I think, yeah, I, I think we did that game. I think we did the game. Maybe, maybe that's why they had the no-shows. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at Reggie White. We've talked so much about him, and he has obviously been a force in this game as he's been all year long. Great second effort. What a pleasant guy to visit with. He's an impressionist. We've talked about that, the imitations that he does. He's a licensed Baptist, Baptist minister. He is one of those guys that, uh, as the year has worn on, he's just gotten better and better. Well, the key, forget about all the other things he does. Forget about all those things. The number one thing about him is he has a great, great attitude. He's an attitude player. Yep. Along with a great ability, he's a great attitude player. He runs a 4.6940, Hank, and he weighs 288 pounds. That's a deadly combination. By the way, an update, the 49ers now have taken the lead over New England, 1917. Cleveland, well, looks like they're gonna clinch the division. Bernie Kozar's really coming on. Yeah, they're playing well, I tell you, they're sneaking up on people and have played very, very well the last few weeks. And uh, this is really no surprise because of the way they've played and the way Kozar's been playing. So Cleveland will be moving into the playoff picture. That AFC really scrambled. Third down now, nine yards to go. Blur will operate out of the spread or the shotgun, if you prefer. Pressure coming. He got it off to Walker. Walker's going to get the first down with a good second effort. Herschel Walker out to the 40. Giles made the stop. This is what makes him such a great back. Look at the misses. Now look at the misses. Watch it. Look at the stun. Look at Clark coming around the outside. And he gets there just a little bit too late. But watch. Deliver the ball to Herschel Walker. And watch right here. He gets a shot and runs right through the would-be tackler. Another two guys hit him. But after they get, hit, they get hit, he still makes another six yards. That's six catches for 62 yards. He was 11 shy of a club record for a season. Tony Hill has that with 74. Now they ought to come back with the hook. Oh, here they coming outside again. Orsett trying to get outside, and there's just nothing going. Again, Hank, uh, you try to go wide on these guys, and they are really tough. Well, the other thing is uh, surprising is that Tony Dorsett 
is hesitating a little bit, trying to do a little jig in there, trying to decide where to go. By the time he makes a decision, everybody's there, and the, fall, the stadium falls in on him. You know, usually he's very decisive, but to where they're pursuing, he hasn't been very decisive, and I think somewhere along the line, with better field position, a, a reverse of some kind could be very appropriate. You know, it's funny. You'll look at him, and he looks indecisive, and the next time he'll break one on that's you for a, 50 well, that's yards. A, that's the personality of a great back. Second down now, virtually 10 yards to go after that last play, approaching the end of the third quarter. Lure with a lot of time. Walker again. Very good. Open field attempt by Reichenbach. He broke that tackle. Joyner knocks him out of bounds, but Reichenbach had him stopped five yards short of the first down, and now we're going to have a personal foul against the Eagles in front of the Cowboy bench. See, the play itself is really not that impressive. What happens once he catches the ball is, is the thing that makes an impression. Reichenbach has, has a good position to make the tackle, and he bounces That's right off foul. of it. Number 29 in the defense. He, Did he really hit him? He was, he was, he was hit out of bounds. Waters trying, down. trying to plead the case for the Eagles, but it's fouls with the personal foul. Let's see if we can pick it up here. That's Joyner on the tackle, and here comes Fouls. Hmm. Yep, that's what he did. He hit him was out of bounds. 15-yard gain plus a 15-yard penalty. Total of 30-yard gain on the play, and all of a sudden now they're in business, as you would say, yeah. just short of the 30. Yeah, but the key was that Reichenbach had a great shot and missed. He just ran yeah. right through it. Well, I tell you what, there's been a lot of guys that he's run through, though. You'll see more of that. He just bounce off of it. First down now, two seconds left in this quarter. Roll Roll out. Rolling out, getting some time. End zone. And it's caught. Touchdown, Renfro. Renfro now coming down the right side of your screen gets off the line of scrimmage. He's kind of sneaky. Look, he makes a move, and it, see a double move is effective on Roynell Green or Roynell Young. We mentioned that a little while ago. Gets up the field, the ball is thrown right on the money. He makes the catch, touchdown Cowboys. But you're, again, you're not going to run right by Roynell Young. You got to make some kind of a double move. That was effective, and they get the touchdown. Boy, he rolled out and got that additional time, didn't he? Yes, he did. Renfro with his second touchdown catch of the year. He's been hurt this year on the injured reserve list the first four weeks. You know, funny thing happened in the high school championship game last night. Uh, somebody went into the locker room with the team that was losing, and he said it was Mike Renfro. He gave the team a big pep talk. Well, anyway, he scores a big touchdown, as now it's a 14-13 score at the end of the third quarter. We now pause for a word from your local station. So the Cowboys now enjoy a one-point lead, 14-13, after that 30-yard touchdown pass from Palour to Renfro. Stepped in, will be kicking off again. Croppers goes back deep. And he's joined back there by Tadal Atasi. And here comes Junior. And he's out to the 31. Well, Hank, you said it would be a day of big plays. The first one occurring back in the first half. Let's go a 30-yard touchdown pass to Mike Renfro. See, he makes a double move, a right and up on Roy Nell Young. The ball is thrown inside and makes, a and makes the, the uh, catch for the touchdown. From the 31 now, the Eagles playing catch-up again. In motion is Byer. Play action. Cavanaugh wide open is Johnson. And Johnson has a first down catch out to the 43-yard line. Lockhart flying back there, also Everson Walls. First down, though, and there's that play action, Hank, that you were looking for. It set it up very well. Yeah, I'm surprised. The way they're rushing and the way they react to what they see, a play action should be very effective, very efficient, and they haven't really run it or thrown it very often at all. Johnson playing in place of the injured Mike Quick. A little offense. Walker, 191 of those. Well, it doesn't surprise you. There's a gift to Tony. Tony smacks off the left-hand side. Lockhart, who's shaken up on that previous series, has come back in now to make two tackles back-to-back. -back. You know what they're doing? They're double-teaming Reeves. Uh, I'm Randy White, I'm sorry, Randy White, and they're leaving the middle linebacker free, and they expect the back to either cut 
behind the, the flow of the middle linebacker or if he gets tied up inside to go outside. But that time Lockhart wasn't fooled. It was right at the perfect, perfect, perfect angle and made the play. Randy White, nine tackles and one quarterback sack. Not to mention uh, the hurries he's had back there. Second down now, seven yards to go. Kavanaugh, protection, he lost the ball. I don't know what happened, but it got away from him. Randy White is on top of it. The ball just slipped out of his hand. He went back to throw the ball, had it cocked, and it slipped right out of his hand and fell down to the turf and was recovered by Randy White of the Dallas Cowboys. But it's been raining off and on today. The field has been wet. And Kavanaugh, that time, uh, got time he's ready to release it. Let's look at it. It got away from him. Watch it. He goes up with the ball. Now watch it. He brings it up. Here he comes. He steps up into the pocket, brings it up, and it slips right out of his hand in the process. And they recover, talking about the Cowboys. They have possession on the plus 37. With a one-point lead. Dallas would like to capitalize on here. Bloor, he's in trouble. Oh, man, is he in trouble. That's the third sack of the game. Tom Struthers, number 93, is there. 98, Greg Brown. He just had no chance whatsoever on this play. Watch the middle. Watch the middle. Look at the surge of the defensive people. Look at Reggie White. Nobody blocks him except he block comes in late. Gets a piece of him late, but he gets the penetration. I tell you, if you don't get in front of White, you're not going to block him from the side. He's too big and too strong. And if you give him a shoulder, he's going to knock it right out of there. Let me ask you something. Who wants to get in his way? Well, I don't know, but they got that's why they're playing the game. Somebody better get want to get in his way. <laughs> Second down now, 19. Three men are right there. Brown, brothers, along with White. Here's Pelur. Time to throw, and Waters trying to come up with the ball. The completion is made. That's Mike Sherrard fighting for the football, making the catch at the 36-yard line. Still got a ways to go for that first down. I tell you, you can't get better coverage than that. Look at Sherrod come off the line of scrimmage. Waters is underneath, running with him. He makes the stop. Watch the ball. Come, he comes back for the ball, and Waters is right there in his first catch today, but a beautiful catch there by Sherrod, number 86 and shut down his first catch. Brings up now a third and seven. He had 34 coming into the game. He became a starter Thanksgiving Day. And you're going to hear a lot about this number one draft pick out of UCLA. Third down, seven now from the 34. He might even try to roll here. I don't know. No, they're going to go back, back to the pocket. He's got time. Yes, he does, but it's going to be intercepted. That's Alonzo Johnson. Their second round draft pick out of Florida. That's a very big athletic move and a big turnover after that fumble earlier by Kavanaugh. It's not only a good athletic move, it's a great catch, great interception. That's what it is, Alonzo Johnson, 54. You're right, Gary, a great move on the part of Alonzo Johnson, number 54. He's got plenty of time to throw the ball this time, too. Look it. He steps, throws, follows through, and there's the ball, and there's Alonzo Johnson making the interception. And he's able, they're trying to knock it out of his hand, but he still maintains possession. Impressive effort by Johnson. That is his third interception. And the Eagles have it at the 30-yard line. But time. They haven't scored following the turnover. Alonzo Johnson coming up with the interception, setting it up now at the Eagles' 30-yard line. 14-13 Dallas. 12-03 left in the game. Spagnola comes in motion. Myers, he's straightened up and driven backward. That's Lockhart again. Lockhart with excellent reaction will bring up a second down. The problem, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Gary, they're finally double teaming Randy White and leaving Lockhart free. And uh, with him being free, nobody blocking him. He's right there to make the tackle. He had 10 tackles and a sack in the first Eagles game. Leading tackler coming into this game. They call him our equalizer. <laughs> He's equalized a few things in this last two or three series. It'll bring up second down nine. in this way, see if they do something this way. Yep, now they're changing the formation to a pass formation. There it is. Kavanaugh. That's David Little, the tight end, and he'll go out of bounds just across the 35-yard line. That'll be almost five yards short of the first down and come to a third down. Well, he started last week when Spagnola was hurt. Well, at least, you know, you got a better situation with third and five. They've had to go third and ten most of the time all afternoon on a third down situation. 
They've reduced it to five in this particular series, and uh, now they have a chance to do something reasonable and not have to travel that far except just go five yards or more. They have to go more than five, of course, to make the first down. Third down and five right now as they have Jackson split to the near side. Ron Johnson to the top for the screen. Boy, look at that middle. That's Tony in motion. Flag on the play. I think the right tackle move for Philadelphia. I think it was Joe Conwell, number 79, who set up to pass block before the ball was snapped. That's exactly who it was, uh, Gary. Right tackle. I think it was, too. Boy, boy, does that hurt you, though. Big third and five, and you make kills a move you. like that. Just kills you. False start, number 79 on the offense. Third down will be repeated. Conwell is one of those guys who's had to become a starter due to some injuries, in particular Leonard Mitchell, who's undergone arthroscopic surgery on his knee. Conwell played for the USFL Baltimore Stars. They were the champions. He has started now the last four games at right tackle after missing six weeks with a fractured toe. Now they got the seven defensive backs in the game. Let's see how they challenge this. Third down and 10. Blitz coming. Holloway, they picked it up. And good coverage that time by Walls on Kenny Jackson. Well, that penalty really hurts you. It changes your play call. It changes everything. And now they got to punt the football. Let me ask you something, Coach. You think the Cowboys would think about, even though they got a one-point lead, bringing Reggie Collier in? They said he was ready for this game. Yeah, no, they won't. I don't think so. No way in the world I put him in uh, under these conditions. He hadn't played all year long. And uh, to put him in in a game where they have to win, I don't think they could justify to do it. I think if they were way ahead or way behind, they would. But in this kind of a game, as being as close as it is, with all the defensive variations, I don't think they'd put him in. Lure suffering two interceptions today, throwing that last one. Hunt by Telchik, Gordon Banks fields it inside the 30. And down there very quickly to make that stop was Michael Haddix. Also helped arriving that time by William Frizzell. 41-yard punt. With 10.58 to go, Dallas has the football now. Captured the NFC East, beating up on the Cardinals. I think any time you play as well, they're playing defensively. Green Bay's playing much better, too. Yep. They're coming on. Well, they hadn't had those blocked punts. And this snap last week, they might have done better. Look at this. How about that? Vinny Testaverde was here today. They were announcing the Kodak All-American, and he could end up there. And San Francisco now is building their lead against New England. So the Cowboys need some help there, too. Here is Herschel Walker. He got a yard, and that's all Struthers is now playing quite a bit, number 93 out of Jackson State. Over to make the stop. And that's the best way to tackle him is from behind, close to the line of scrimmage. Guarantee you don't want to get in front of him, right? Unless he decides to go back and put it in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the wave going here now at Texas Stadium. Third down and two now for Dallas. Eagles hold him here. There's a lot of time in this game. 9.44 remaining. Tony Hill split to the near side. Gerard to the top of the field as Fleur has a third and two. Play action. And he's got his man. That's Cosby, the tight end, who they said they wanted to go to a lot today. And he makes an important third down catch for the first down. Cosby in the, in the middle of the screen gets a free release. Nobody block, uh, bumps him at all. The linebacker isn't involved in coverage this time. He's wide open. And uh, for that reason, why they're able to make the necessary yardage for the first down. Terry Hogue involved in coverage that time and uh, wasn't close enough to make the play. 19-yard pickup. Cosby with his first catch of the day, 28th of the season. Again, they have not gone to him that much with their new offensive scheme this year. I can't understand yet why. Uh-oh, here's a draw play. Or set, and there's just nothing going on there. Good reaction that time by Greg Brown, but also Alonzo Johnson was over there. A loss of three. Brown came through first, but it was Johnson who made the tackle. Watch number 54, Alonzo Johnson. Look at the pursuit on his part. Look at he's number 54 in a great position, good and low, 
and isn't fooled by the fake and makes the play. A beautiful play by Alonzo Johnson, number 54. Also Brown, he got a hand on him there. You can see it on that replay. Second down now, 13 yards to go. Ballour coming up the middle, the pressure, the pass broken up. Boy, that ball. Lucky it wasn't intercepted, and it just didn't materialize at all. I guess Walker was the guy who was intended for it, but he had two offensive linemen, Rafferty and Kitesen, are right in his midst. There just wasn't any operating room. And you see the way Reggie White, number 92, once he got rid of his man, the, the quick way he accelerated and got to the quarterback to make him throw the ball right into a lot of trouble. I tell you, he's, a, he's an all-pro player. He's a terrific player and maintains a very high level of intensity throughout the game. That's a great thing about it. It doesn't sag. Hey, it was a mouthful when Buddy Ryan said he's the most gifted defensive lineman I've ever been around, and he's around the Bears. Well, I tell you, he's one thing he isn't. He isn't a stock market player. He's not up and down. He's consistent. Third down, 13 now for Dallas. Blur over the middle, and that one not well thrown. He was waiting for the man to clear over the middle, and it just didn't develop, that man being Newsom because Greg Brown was hurrying him up, and it's come to a fourth down, and the Eagles are going to get the football. Watch Reggie White again, number 92, and Brown, number 98. Reedy is the guy that comes in the inside. He's the guy that gives him a shot right in the smush and knocks him down on the play. In the what? <laughs> Repeat that again. Smush. A lot of our fans are not familiar with that term. We at CBS hear it quite often. Well, we ought to call it Sable. He'll know. Anyway, he got hit in the smush, so Saxon's going to have to punt again. Now, he hits this in a mile high. And they're going to let that one make it into the end zone for the touchback. So at the 20-yard line, a 42-yard punt. The Eagles trailing by one, 80 yards away from the goal line, 822 left to play. But yards away from trying to take this lead, there is Keith Byers had 127 yards last week in that tie with the Cardinals. That's for the game, but there are no yards at all in the second half. Remember, he started the game out with what a 17-yard run, and since that time, it's been uh, tough sledding. Boy, what a personable guy Keith Byers is! What a future he's going to have. That offensive line gets some experience. Did Cunningham continue to develop? That's yeah, a handful. And I, and I think they have to make a real commitment to the running game, too. So. See if they run right here. They're leaning this way. No, nope, play action right. That's what you wanted, those that play action. Kavanaugh going for it. Down here is Johnson. Check that Jackson. And he made a fine catch at the 30-yard line. Kavanaugh threw that one a long ways. Well, he did. He got rid of it. Great anticipation. A beautiful spiral. But again, it's a play action fake. They fake it. They finally throw it on first down. Fellows is the, is the coverage guy on the play, the right corner. And he runs right by him. The ball is thrown right out in front. And Kenny Jackson, uh, Kenny Jackson, number 81, makes the play after he beats Ron Fellows. Look at He's about two yards out in front. Fellows makes a desperate attempt to knock the ball down, but it's two out in front. And Jackson makes the play. 49-yard gain to the 31. Fires. Tries to go against the green, and he maybe got a yard. Inter interesting, Hank, you lose Mike Quick. And you got to have somebody kind of come to the occasion, rise up. And it's Jackson. He made that touchdown catch a while ago, and now this 49-yarder. You lose one guy, and the other guy's got to fill the ranks. And number 81 has done exactly that. Yeah, somebody's always got to fill the void. You know, somehow, some way, you got to win the game. You can't worry about who's going to do it. Somebody has to do it. And that was a big play on the part of Kenny Jackson, and a great throw by Kavanaugh. Second down, nine. You know, good, uh, good quarterbacks might have a bad first quarter, or maybe, but they never have four bad quarters if they're any kind of a quarterback. And I think that uh, is typical of the kind of a quarterback Kavanaugh can be. Kavanaugh throwing that one on the line, and John Spagnola, the tight end, made the catch, and he made it with people all around him. Kavanaugh that time waited just a little longer to get rid of the ball. He was popped pretty good, but the veteran Spagnola caught it. It's third and two. Well, is that. As we talked about earlier, I think he's getting more confident as the game progresses. It's the first time he's played in a long time. And it's hard to come right off the bench and, you know, play like you play if you're playing all the time. But he's getting better. Well, they always had the label of being the best backup quarterback in the NFL, always waiting to play. Now he's got his chance. He's over 200 yards, 203 yards passing, 13 to 25. Third and two. 
going to run left. Tony in motion, Byers, and I don't think he made it. Randy White made sure of that. Now you've got a fourth down, Coach. McFadden has kicked two field goals of 26 and 50 yards. Buddy Ryan looking to see how far they've got to go on this. He's got to kick the field goal. I wouldn't fool around with anything but a field goal. Here he comes, McFadden, who was ecstatic in that first half on that 50-yarder, his longest of the season. This is going to be a, what, a 41-yard attempt. And this, and I think if he had a choice, he'd rather kick from the left hash mark than the right hash mark because he kicks a natural hook sometimes, aims it a little bit inside the right upright, and goes right through there in good shape from the left hash mark. This will be officially a 40-yard attempt by McFadden. It's on the way, and the Eagles have the lead. McFadden, who has absolutely been struggling, and that's an understatement, who was down on himself. But many people felt if he had kicked well at all, they would have won maybe two, three more games, and today he's three of three. Well, he's too great a kicker, and I think he's very sensitive. And he's very demanding of himself. Look at this now. Watch him. Watch him kick it. Watch his reaction. Happiness is in the air. There he is. Look at the two of them. They spent a lot of time together, and they're happy for each other when they do something extremely well. Well, I think what you have to understand, he's had three different holders this year, two different snappers, had a different special teams coach. There's some things you have to fight through. Well, there's a lot of things to consider. And again, the kicker spends so much time alone, you know, without any encouragement sometimes from anybody else. And sometimes they rehearse and rehearse and they kick too much, especially this time of the year. you got to spend a lot of time with them and make sure that they understand that you're very involved with their phase of the game. You just can't go out and say, kick it through there. I think it has to be developed during the course of the week and during the course of the season. You don't think the Eagles haven't played some close games, Hank? <laughs> They've oh, been in overtime the last two. Ever since that measurable start, and then, then they beat the Rams, they've been in them. Hey, listen, I tell you, any time that you play as well as they play defensively, you've got a chance to win any time. And that's the way they've gone. They've lost, I've said so many times, that you're going to win or lose five or seven games with a kicking game, and they've lost about five with a kicking game. Kickoff, two men there. Lovett eventually has it. Lovett to the 15-yard line, and that's where Dallas will start. Brazil made the stop. Now for an update on that San Francisco New England game. Here's Brent Musburger. Going right down to the end of the season. Patriots coming back. Now the Cowboys down by two. The start of this weekend, 17 of the 28 teams were still the playoff pitcher. Shows you how tight it's been. Here's Pelour. So he had an 84-yard oh. run from the line of scrimmage and now an 84-yard touchdown catch. Look at this for the day. 283 yards in total offense. That's amazing. Really amazing the way he can change the personality of a game. Longest pass of the year for this Dallas team, as you might suspect. Point after attempt. Boy, it didn't take long for them to get the lead back. Well, let's look at it again. So that's the nice thing about it's hard to defense speed. Wow. Well, you know, he said he wanted to go back to running track. What does he have to run track? He's had a track meet out here today. Well, he's practicing right now. <laughs> he's rehearsing for the track season right now on the last two on the two plays he made today. <laughs> this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys in the National Football League is prohibited. 22-16 Dallas. Charles Crawford out of Oklahoma State. To the 20, 25, and look at this. Out to the 35, the 40, and some of those big plays continue to develop here. So Philadelphia obviously is not going to give up in this one. 450 left in the game. Hank, it's just amazing to me a guy of Walker size can run that fast. You know, you see the Dorsets and the Mike Sherrards, and they have that lean, fast look. Here's Walker weighing 235 pounds.
from the 43 yard line. Philadelphia now trailing. Kavanaugh over the middle. Spagnola wrestles and he's got it. Spagnola still on his feet and the veterans to the 30 yard line. Lockhart eventually making the stop. A 26 yard game and Spagnola now made two big catches in this fourth quarter of play. Spagnola does a great job and Lockhart is involved in coverage. Watch 56. Watch the middle linebacker. Now there he is. He gets a piece of him, then he goes to the outside, is in hot pursuit, tries to shake the ball loose, but uh, Spagnola maintains possession and runs down the field and finally tackled by Everson Walls, number 24. Boy, a great play by Spagnola. Line of scrimmage at the 31. First down, Philadelphia trailing 21 to 16. Kavanaugh going up top. Jackson is there. Touchdown, Kenny Jackson. Ted Plum mentioned the fact going into the game they could lick fellows on a flag, on a post flag, and here it is, good protection. And look at he throws it on the outside to fellows. Here comes the ball coming down. Boy, what a sensational catch by Kenny Jackson. Fellows really was right there in good position to make the play, but uh, Jackson just made a fantastic, fantastic catch. Well, a 31-yard touchdown catch by Jackson. After earlier catching one for 49 yards, McFadden adds a point after. Jackson has four catches now and 98 yards and two touchdowns. One way and one coming back the other way for 31 yards. And all of a sudden, it's 23-21 in favor of the Eagles. And watch this. Carol Clack, a rookie out of Arizona State, almost broke that one. Clack has been lost in the shuffle this year because of the addition of Herschel Walker. Hasn't played that much, but we have a penalty fly. Offensive holding, number 85 on the kick return team. That's Chandler, 85, holding on the play. Thornton Chandler, the rookie out of Alabama, plays tight end. Excellent blocker. He's been a real surprise this year. Chandler, a sixth-round draft pick. So they're going to move it back to the 25-yard line. Both teams are guilty of the same thing. They both do a poor job on coverage after they score a touchdown. Well, we've had something going in this fourth quarter in this game now. Herschel Walker with 283 yards in total offense. The record is 285. Bullock, Bob Hayes, and Calvin Hill hold the record. He's too short of that. Here's Pelour. He tries to get rid of it. They may have intentional grounding there. Reggie White had him. That's what they're calling intentional grounding by Pelour. Reggie White, we've talked about him an awful lot all afternoon, and justifiably so. He was involved in another sack. That's a loss of down. Intentional grounding. Loss of the down. First. Second down. Let's look at it again, Coach. See what you think. Uh, here we see Reggie White coming from the left side, back in the pocket. Brown is getting penetration. Struthers is coming through, but look at Reggie White. The only thing, you know, the thing that's questionable is the possession rule. You'd think he was... In he, the grass. Yeah, in the grass. I'm surprised he didn't call in. Well, now it's going to be second and 23 for the Cowboys. Cosby in motion. Fuller setting up at the two, comes out throwing. He's got Sherrard at the 20, so they get some of it back. Still about 12 yards short of the first down, and it goes to a third down. See, the grass thing is such a judgment call, and uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a situation where they just barely touched the guy, and they said possession. Now they had him in the grass, when they don't call possession. So you know, it's a tough, it's a tough, tough uh, judgment call to make, evidently. But I thought really he was in the grass. Third down, 13 yards to go. Three minutes, seven seconds left to go in the game. 23-21, Philadelphia leading Dallas. 
Cowboys, if they're going to make the playoffs, they've got to pull this one out. They don't know where to line up. Bernard Wilson is confused. They're playing a zone this time. Now the middle Delors is wide open. Take off. He's got a long ways to run. Can he get there? He will not. He's short of the first down at the 32. He had to go 13 yards. That was just too far to scramble. Gary Cobb eventually caught up with him. That's going to bring up a fourth down. Are they going to go for it here, Hank, or do you punt and try to stop him and get it back? No, I think you got to go for it. I don't think that you, you don't have enough time. you got to make the play. you got to try to make the play right here. Go for it on fourth and two. I think they agree. That's exactly what they're going to do. Pelour showed me some quickness on that play. Scrambled very well. But it's still fourth down and two, and here they go. They got to hit. They got to hit. Try. Try to hit one of the backs in the back. Coming out of the backfield, I would think, to make sure they get the necessary yardage in a high percentage kind of a play. Let's see what they call. We have the two-minute warnings. What's happened two here? Two-minute warning. So the Cowboys calm, cool, and collected. He's always under control. Has a great reason for what he does and why he does it. Let's see what he does here. Line of scrimmage, the 32. The last time they were in this situation, they, threw, they ran a play-action pass. Let's see. No, they're not in a play-action pass situation. Now Herschel Walker's on a wing. Whoop, he doesn't know where to go. They might try to get it to him in the flat. Now he's going motion right. Lure looking that way. Oh. He's going to try to take off. Fumble. Fumble the ball. It's picked up by Dallas, but they are short of the first down. Rafferty, the veteran center, came up with it, and the Eagles have the football as they've run out of downs. That play was like cellophane paper because they saw right through it. They brought uh, Herschel Walker from side to side, which was obvious they were going to try to get the ball to him in the flat just enough yardage because he breaks tackles so well. But he didn't have a chance to throw the ball to him. He decides to run, drops the ball, it's recovered. And now the uh, Eagles have possession first and 10. Boy, I tell you, the Eagles have <laughs> have created some excitement, haven't they? Well, you know, that was a bad time for the Cowboys to, to have any indecision, and there yep. was indecision as far as the formation and the alignment was concerned, and as a result, they didn't succeed in making the necessary yardage for the first down. And you would think with that two-minute warning, you had time to straighten that all out. You would think so, and I really think that uh, Walker was on the left wing. He was in a better position to make the yardage there than he was had he sent up the flare and gone across the mo formation in motion to tell everybody, here I am, this is where I'm going to be, and he was covered. So now with a minute 52 left in the game, the Eagles now just try to hang on to this one. Two-point lead. Get straight ahead, nothing doing, and the Cowboys are going to ask for a timeout. They'll stop it with 1.48 left to go. Boy, you look at this Eagle team. Their last five losses by a total of 15 points. They've been in three overtime games, losing one to the Bears, tying one, and winning one. Well, I read an article the other day about the players. They're saying, you know, I bet you nobody in the league who is out of the race is working as hard as we work. We're still working on the weights. We're still working on conditioning. We're still working hard and long in practice. We're building for the future. We're still going to try to win every game we play. But the attitude of this team is, hey, we're just because we lost some games doesn't mean we're going to take a vacation. We're still coming to play, and that's what they've done here this afternoon. I'll tell you, it's no vacation for the opponent, the way they come after you. They have created all kinds of problems, and... Buddy Ryan playing with his young football team. We mentioned 31 guys, three years or less. They have 13 rookies, eight of whom have started this year. He weeded it out. They called it the purge in Philadelphia, and the purge is starting to pay some dividends. That's what I was mentioning earlier. Last five losses, 15 points. you got to remember that Jaworski is still going to be in the picture. You know, he's too fine a quarterback. He's out for the season, but he'll be in contention next year, and I guarantee he's going to put up a fight to be the quarterback again next year. Dallas has one timeout remaining. Here is Tony, and Tony will make it to about the 30-yard line and still run around, but it's been blown dead, and Bill Bates over there, uh, and they're going to have to separate him. Frustration. It's been a frustrating December for this Dallas team, a frustrating last four weeks. And so Dallas now with no timeouts left. And so the 20 consecutive winning seasons are going to come to an end. This guy's had a lot of success. He's handled, I think, Hank, not only his success well, but 
the times when he hasn't won. He's a man of uh, some real grace, some real poise. Well, he's, you know, there's no question about the fact that he's great credit to the game and also to the operation. Well, let's let's take this opportunity while we'll I've breaking the action to ask Tom Landry how he has approached this disappointing season. You got to be depressed when you lose as much as we've lost, but it is a challenge. Uh, you have to be able to come back. You know, if you don't, if you can't come back from from adversity, you just uh, you shouldn't be in this game because you're going to be in it if you play long enough. Certain circumstances are going to come together and put you in this kind of situation we're in right now, and you have to untangle it and get it going again. Get it going again, they will. You can bet on that. So Landry, with a seven and seven record, their team now to drop seven eight. They'll finish up next week against the Bears. And look at this, San Francisco defeating New England. 29-24, and your cold-weather quarterback, Montana, came through. Yeah, as I mentioned, he does it as well as anybody in the game. Jackson has had a big game, comes in motion. Byers, Byers on a third down and 10. Will not get the first down. It'll bring up a fourth down with a minute 30. Dallas cannot stop the clock. They're out of timeouts. This Dallas team started out with a six and two record and they lost those tough games to the Giants and Redskins. They lost Danny White. They had Dorsett and Walker hobbled. All those combinations have led to them dropping out of the playoff picture. You know the funny thing about this Dallas team is their creed has been start fast and finish strong and they've won opening day games 21 of the last 22 opening day games but they've been very very poor and mediocre in December. Yep. Yeah they really have. They've uh, it's amazing what they've done through the years. They're all in one prior to today all in two for this December of 1986. It's, it's funny thing how you look at this score Cleveland is dominating Cincinnati. 34 to 3. That's surprised they're winning, but I'm surprised by that much. That's right. I'm the, especially they're playing the game in Cincinnati, in Cincinnati, isn't it? So Buddy Ryan on his way to his fifth win. Nine losses and one tie. Say one thing. You see this team play. You see some football. <laughs> you get all your money's worth, don't you? Yeah, they're a sledgehammer team. You know, they keep an keep coming after you all the time. It's a great credit to the coaching staff. They come after Telchik. You gotta let it hit, and they almost saved it. Did they save it? They may have saved it inside the five-yard line. They did. Nope, now one guy's indicating touchback. No, I think he was in the yeah. end zone when he made the play. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line with only 40 seconds left. And that was Frizzell who made the great play number 33. You know what the funny story is on him. Buddy Ryan always has trouble with names. He called William Frizzell lefty Frizzell when he checked into the Philadelphia camp a couple of weeks ago. He's going to coach their offseason basketball <laughs> team. And he calls Todd Latasi Junior Smith. Used to call them only by numbers, didn't he, Hank? Well, I think the other guys, he didn't know the names of the other guys. He just says, hey, you. <laughs> Well, this is some win if they can hang on here with 40 seconds to go. No timeouts left for the Cowboys. They trail by two. They'd like to get close enough for a field goal attempt. Kalur's got to use the sideline and nothing doing there to Gordon Banks. Struthers putting some pressure up the middle that time. And that's a, that's the theory of the defense. Buddy Ryan's defense, they put those three big linemen on the two guards in the center. They want a big push. Push those people into the path of the quarterback so he can't step and throw he has to throw from the back foot and that's what happens he's going to throw poorly if he doesn't get a chance to follow through line of scrimmage the 20 second down and 10 35 seconds left Dallas to lose their fourth in a row six of their last seven games they can't somehow manufacture some kind of a comeback and this is caught and did he get out of bounds? Catch by Sherrard. He did not get out of bounds, did he? No, no he didn't. He get didn't. Out. The clock is running with 20 seconds. 19-yard gain on the play. 17. You see the time left. Well, now they're going to be careful. This prevent defense. You know, people go right down the field against this prevent a lot of times. You're not careful. The lure and the catch is made out of bounds at the 48-yard line by Walker. Stops the clock. You see the time left. Six seconds. 
Walker now, nine catches, Hank, for 170 yards. That's a whole season for some guys. It's amazing. I tell you, you talk about a guy that makes things happen. Ooh. He does. Well, you don't have a lot of options here, Coach. You have no timeouts left, six seconds left. You have the football on your own 48-yard line. They're going to send three men this way, Banks, Cosby, and Tony Hill, and Sherrard to the far side. Yeah, they got to hope for a pass interference or some kind of a magic play. Ballure is going to put it up for grab. Cosby's down there, are the Eagles as well, and Oak went up, and that is going to be the end of the football game. So the Cowboys will not make the playoffs. They have lost their fourth in a row. Buddy Ryan's team now moves to a record of five, nine, and one. A team that in the second half of the season has played everybody as tough as you can play them. Losing one game early in the year in overtime, winning another, tying another. It was the game, as you called it, Hank, of big plays. Very difficult to protect your quarterbacks. And the type of game which had a very, very interesting rhythm to it. So, got to congratulate Buddy Ryan. On the other hand, as you watch Tom Landry and the Cowboys go into the dressing room, you realize that you just don't automatically make the playoffs. There's a lot of things that make you successful in 20 straight winning years. You have to earn the right to make the playoffs. As an end result, Dallas will drop out. San Francisco winning, they're still very much in the picture. Of course, the Minnesota Vikings still trying to keep their hopes alive. We have the Giants, the Bears, the Redskins in, waiting for the Rams who could clinch with their victory. San Francisco very much on their heels should they stumble. And, of course, Minnesota, who you look back at their season, missing two games with Tommy Kramer and missing their punter in one game. And so as an end result, they are still in it. So once again, the final score. The Philadelphia Eagles, 23. The Dallas Cowboys, 21. For Hank Stram, this is Gary Bender saying so long from Irving, Texas.